we're going to do today is look at a program called the Wick Editor. It's a simple program that couldn't be as complex as you want to make it, but it will help you get drawing and animating within one try. So let's take a look at that. So on the Wick Editor, again, if you go to the Wick Editor, uh, the page is going to look like this, and it will allow you to basically make it could make uh, complex animations, but you can also make very simple animations. So here's one that I made. And again, um, if it's too fast, you can always slow them down. Uh, so when you click on the title, so I call it mine when I meet people, we'll go over some basics here. Um, first of all, we have the frame rate. The frame rate is frames per second. So that means how many frames, how many pictures you show in one second. And just think of a flip book. Most of you have seen a flip book, and that's where you, you, know, you flip through the pages, and each page is a different page, and as the pages flip quickly, it appears to move. That is the basic premise of all animation. So if you're watching um, you know, classic animation like Bambi or something like that, as the uh, image moves, you're seeing a different picture every time. So those are called cells. Now, the frame rate here is 12 seconds, uh, or sorry, 12 frames in one second. And you can notice down here, these are my actual frames. So I actually only have 14. So that means that our image is gonna be just a little more than one second. Now, if we wanna slow that down a little bit, I'm gonna change it to 10 and hit apply. Again, all I did was I clicked here. This is where you title it, give it a name, and it allows you to change the frame rate, give it a title, and you can change the size of the canvas too. And all right, so we slowed it down a little bit. All right, again, we can do five frames per second. It's going to be real slow. But again, remember, we're trying to create a very simple, quick video. And a little bit of speed is necessary to make it a little smoother. So let's go ahead and change that back. I kind of liked 10. I thought that looked pretty good. So we'll stick with 10 and leave it right there. All right, so let's take a look at how we can get something very simple like this. So this is the main page. This is how it looks when you start. And again, we'll just review real quick some of these items, and you can use this whenever you have a question. Uh, we have a selection tool. We have a brush tool, a pencil, an eraser. We can make shapes, so squares, circles, line tool, a path selection, text, a fill bucket, an eyedropper, and this is our fill color and our stroke color. All right. Over here, we have we have new, we have open. We can actually import video into it and animate it, um, add like color to it and stuff. We have export, which is how we would uh, get our work out from the program, and save. Here we have something that looks very similar to the layers palette that we've seen in PhotoP or if you use Photoshop. And down here, we can actually see there are the frames, okay? So this is the actual frames of the animation. We can add layers to it. So, you know, when you see a cartoon and, um, you know, you have Goku or something, and he's like powering up the spirit bomb, the background's not also moving because they are two different cells. So when one thing is moving, the other thing in the background is not moving, and it's a separate piece of uh, artwork, basically. Now, I'll show you that here. So what we're going to do is start with the paintbrush, and all I want you to do is simply draw a straight line. Now, once you've drawn a straight line, that's on one piece of paper. So there's not a second image. So if we go to the second piece of paper, just like a flip book, so the paper on top, uh, there's nothing there. Now, what we can do, though, is right here is the most useful part of this program. So we are able to click this icon, and it allows us to see what the previous slide is. So this right now, it looks kind of gray, is not currently showing up. It's just showing us, like, the history. And what, why that's important is because then if I draw right here, and it allows me to know what came before it so we can make a smooth animation with our drawing then i would click the third frame 
the fourth frame. And you can notice the previous, like the ghost image is also changing because it's showing us what came before it. All right, now just that very simple animation. Let's hit play and see how it looks. Boom. All right, that's basically it. Now, let's continue. So I'm going to hit pause there. And let's add a new element to this. So for this, all I'm going to do is have uh, an image up here. So here we go. It's the beautiful sun. Okay. Now here's the thing. We are currently on this layer two of our cells. If I click here, there is no yellow sun. Now here's the thing. If I don't want the yellow sun, oh, sorry, let me tell you what I did right there. So this is a separate cell and you can delete them right here or delete them up here. Doesn't matter. Just delete it. But here's the thing. If the sun is going to stay there, the yellow dot is going to stay there and we don't need it to ever move, we can simply grab this layer down here, the cell, the uh, frame, and we can stretch it as far as we want it to go. And if we stretch it throughout the whole thing, it will just remain as the background. If we want it to go to this point, and then here we want it to become, I don't know, orange, we can do that. And again, I can stretch it out as far as I want and notice the sun will change. So again, it's stopping and changing to this orange right at this point. Again, if that's not something you want on there, you can delete that part of the project. So this uh, is pretty much the basics for what you would need. Now again, you have your layers in here. You can notice they're locked. Um, you can play around with this, but again, this is like, oops, this is my sun layer. So you can see I can turn them off and on just like we would in uh, Photo P or Photoshop. Again, if we want to add another layer, we just come down here and we can add something else. So if we want another part of this to have, you know, you know I want this in there, okay? So you can see that this one's going on further for the actual frames. Also, I did make a mistake. Don't have anything outside of your working canvas. It will screw it up. It will not work. And again, if you want to get rid of something, you can simply delete that. All right, so this should be enough for you to get started playing around with simple animation using the brush tool, some color, and learning how to use frames. Remember, when you have something that you actually want to keep, um, you can hit save, but right now it's just listed as my project. We don't want to do that, so click on that area. You can name it whatever you want. You can change the frame rate. If you feel like it's too fast or too slow, you can change that frame rate. And that did not save it. Okay, that just changed the name and the frame rate. If you're ready to save, you must click over here and click save. And you'll notice it's a .wic file, so that's not something you can use yet. If you want it as an actual file that you could upload and have animate um, through like social media or something, you need to go to export and export it uh, as a GIF. Okay, you can also export the video as an MP4. Uh, so that would also work. You can add sound and stuff too, but for this uh, basic lesson, I think this concludes it. I think you'll get enough from just this.